Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on TBR Media's YouTube channel. My name is Jared and today we are going to be reviewing the new show from Francesca Sloan and Donald Glover and that is of course Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Two lonely strangers land jobs working for a mysterious spy agency that offers them a glorious life of espionage, wealth, world travel, and a dream brownstone in Manhattan. The catch? New identities in an arranged marriage. As Mr. and Mrs. John and Jane Smith now hitched, they navigate a high-risk mission every week while also facing a new relationship milestone. Their complex cover story becomes even more complicated when they catch real feelings for each other. What's riskier, espionage or marriage? And this show leaves it up to the viewer to determine that question. I actually really did enjoy my time watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith. As you know, we reviewed a few months back Citadel from Prime Video as well. And they're leaning kind of heavy into this kind of whole espionage game on Prime Video. The challenge here that the creators had and have acknowledged rightfully so was the fact that we probably didn't need a remake of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie starring film. It was something that I put on as a guilty pleasure. I absolutely love Doug Liman and that whole movie works brilliantly. And I like the subsequent like spy films that we've got, the rom-coms like Night and Day. There's the, I think The Killers or something with Ashton Kutcher. Anyway, I really do like this type of genre. And I think that the challenge that they had was making it fresh and inventive. Ultimately, I think they succeed in some places and fall short in other places. I enjoyed my time watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And even more than that, I enjoyed watching Maya Erskine and Donald Glover together as John and Jane Smith working these missions week to week. The cast that they got for this series to just show up randomly in you know an episode or two here or there is actually quite magnificent. And I enjoyed seeing all of these different actors come to a show like this. and and play something that they normally wouldn't play. I'm not gonna mention all of the different cast members that they got for this show, but I will say you have standouts like Parker Posey, you have um, people like Alexander Skarsgård who you've seen in the trailers. You also have John Tutoro. And that is alone, just those three, very, very special to bring them all into the fold here. And there is so many more people that are present at any given point in the show. And I'm not gonna spoil any more of them because I really do think that you should just be able to see the show for yourself and determine whether or not those surprise cameos work for you. Another thing that I really did like about the show was the inversion of the storyline from the original film. This is a show that kind of takes a different approach to this source material. And I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it in the first few episodes, but once it started to pick up, once we started to actually get that bond between John and Jane in the show, I really did like where we ultimately ended up. Some of the, you know, action set pieces that they have here didn't quite work as well for me. I, I wanted more, I expected more from this um, because the original movie was so action packed and obviously you're taking a, you know, a filmic format, a theatrical filmic format and you're applying that to television. There are ways to do that properly and there are ways that you can kind of fall short in a couple of areas. And unfortunately, I do think that a couple of the sequences don't quite live up to the standard that they probably had set during the screenwriting process. But with that being said, there are a couple of times during these set pieces that you really get a sense of that intensity and that classic banter between John and Jane that just works so well and it's so hilarious to watch as it's unfolding. And so that I thought in addition to the introduction of, you know, certain cameos throughout the show really kind of makes it worth binging. And it's a really easy show to binge, you guys. There's eight episodes. They're like 30, 40 minutes a piece. And ultimately, I think you're going to have a good time watching this. This is way better than I thought Citadel was. Citadel had this weird mix of comedy and action, and I don't feel like they nailed the tone down that well, but here, I do really believe the relationship that John and Jane have when we reach the penultimate episode, and then inevitably where the show ends, it solidifies the relationship so well that you believe everything that just happened to these two characters, and you believe their love for each other, and you believe their their kind of ill will towards each other at the same time. And that's a really hard balance to strike, but I think this show did so much better 
than Citadel did in kind of developing that relationship between the two leads and also giving us a really great send off. If this is all there is, then we ended on a pretty high note, I would say. So the focus here isn't on the world building necessarily. They spend less time doing the world building than developing the actual relationship, which I think was the right approach to this project. They took inspiration from classic spy hits from Hitchcock to Bergman and modern uh, reality shows like Married at First Sight to kind of make this all blend together and work seamlessly. There are really a few hilarious uh, jokes that are being spewed between our two leads here. And I think Erkskin in particular is so fucking good at, at what she does in this show. I think she brings a certain energy to it and pair that with Donald Glover and his comedic approach to things. And I think you get a really pleasurable viewing experience if you're a fan of this type of genre and if you're a fan of the original Mr. and Mrs. Smith I think you'll have a good time here but they set out to subvert as many tropes as possible and I think they achieved a lot of them not all of them but they achieved a lot of the subversion and they handled it with such grace so if you're curious and want to check the show out it is going to be dropping on February 2nd all eight episodes are set to be released on Prime Video on Friday. So I highly encourage you, if you're interested in it, to check it out and let me know your thoughts when you see it down in the comments below.